Happy Monday out there, Team 42. It's your skipper here, Darius Dell, to present our Macro Minute for Monday, October 3rd, 2022. Starting with markets this morning, we have stocks up, commodities up, crypto flat, dollar flat, global bond yields down. Uh, some market moving headlines, got, a, got quite a few of them this morning. So the bond vigilantes won over there in the UK. Uh, so the UK government scrapped its plan to cut taxes for top earners following widespread backlash and mounting rebellion from its own lawmakers. Liz Truss, the prime minister, says she retains confidence and Chancellor Kwasi Kwarteng, who's scheduled to give what will now have to be a very different speech to his party's conference this afternoon uh, as it relates to the budget, the pending budget. Uh, the pound spiked on the announcement then paired some gains as options traders start to pile up bearish wagers again. Shifting gears, Fintit has been looking for the next Lehman since 2008. And so you have uh, Credit Suisse plunging in a fresh terminal this morning uh, after CEO Ulrich Corner's bid to reassure employees and investors backfired. So this weekend, uh, he was sending out memos to employees, investors, counterparties, et cetera, uh, saying everything's going fine. Trust, don't, don't trust, trust us, don't trust the markets. Uh, the stock, which is already more than half this year uh, before today's sell off, fell as much as 12% in jerk trading to a record low. Credit Swiss stock at a record low. Uh, that spike was accompanied by a spike uh, in the cost to ensure the bank's debt against default. I want to say you got five year CDS somewhere around 259 basis points, uh, one year CDS somewhere around 160 ish or so. Um, that's about around a 2.6% probability of default. Um, you know, one thing I'd call out in Credit Suisse, and, and again, these are lagging numbers, so things these things will change over time. But if you look at uh, Credit Suisse tier one capital ratio, it's somewhere north of 13%, which is actually 300 plus basis points higher than what the Swiss government is uh, is, is um, um, in terms of their regulatory oversight, um, in terms of their target, which itself is already 200 basis points higher than what Basel III is suggesting they need to, to have. So and this is a very well capitalized bank. Again, 2.6% probability of default over the next one year. That could obviously continue to rise, but it's certainly not. Um, this is not the next Lehman. <laughs> I would I would be looking uh, elsewhere if you're uh, if you're you're trying to uh, sort of put your tinfoil hat on uh, as it relates to predicting the next financial crisis alongside. 200,000 other investors on finance Twitter. Uh, anyway, uh, capital markets are starting to dry up, though. This is something that is real. But again, just because capital markets are drying up doesn't mean we're in a financial crisis. It just means that growth is slowing. The, cre the economy, the credit machine is slowing. Uh, so new U.S. corporate debt is vanishing as the primary market grinds to a halt. Desks expect $10 billion of investor-grade sales this week with three companies looking to sell today and $75 billion total for the month of October. A paltry $1.7 billion price in the last days of September. And of course, investors are souring on junk. And that was the worst September of fresh junk bond issuance since 2011. So this is exactly what you would expect to see in the context of the Fed trying to slow down the economy through the lens of tightening financial conditions, tighter financial conditions, but all things being equal, reduce the incremental supply and demand for credit. Um, and this is how you get the economic slowdown that the Fed is attempting to engineer. Big movers this morning, huge move in crude oil, up 6% to down 6% month over month uh, on speculation that OPEC, which is, is planning an emergency meeting on Wednesday, is likely to to, uh, to cut production uh, at some point over the near term uh, to shore up, uh, put a floor under oil prices. I guess 80 must be their number. We'll see on Wednesday. Silver's up 5% to up 11% month over month. Uh, we talked about this in the Round the Horn this past weekend, but you look at consumer and corporate balance sheets, it's very different than the narrative uh, that is out there, you know, at least on FinTwit and, and certain financial uh, news media. Um, you know, people have money to go buy to chase silver up 5% today and up 11% month over month. This economy can't be falling off a cliff. I mean, this is the kind, the kind of stuff you see with an economy falling off a cliff. So uh, there's obviously pockets of weakness in the U.S. economy and the global economy in particular, Europe from the global perspective, housing from the U.S. perspective. But in aggregate, um, the economy tends is, is quite resilient, at least here and domestically. So again, this is not the kind of signal you would be seeing uh, if things were falling off a cliff. And then lastly, 10-year uh, nominal treasury yield down 13 basis points uh, this morning uh, in sympathy with the move in the UK guilt market uh, to, uh, to three, about 7%, just up 59 basis points month over month. Uh, but one thing we called out a couple, maybe it's a week ago or two weeks ago, we said, hey, when rates get to 4% on the 10-year, you're going to get some value buyers. Uh, we saw Jeff Gadenluck step up, et cetera. Um, we don't think those value buyers are going to be rewarded over the medium term, but certainly you could easily see something that looks like a 4% 10-year go back down to 3.5 on the 10-year before it starts resuming uh, its climb again in the context of the shrinking uh, the, the, the liquidity cycle downturn that we remain very much engaged in. Until a recession is the modal outcome by the bond market, via an inversion in the three-month 10-year yield curve, we are not going to see sustained uh, positive performance 
in bonds. And I would argue it's probably the same trade with respect to stocks, given the trending correlations. Shifting gears today, very excited, very, very excited here to present my Longbow dashboard. Um, you know, this is, uh, you know, so what Longbow does is effectively everything that I'm doing in Excel every morning in terms of refreshing all of our different uh, economic and market signaling models. And this is a fantastic sort of innovation uh, from our friends over at Longbow. Uh, in, in terms of, you know, helping us, under, you know, contextualize all these different signals and models in real time with real time data. And so just kind of getting into some of the different uh, major markets that we uh, always talk about on the macro minute, you know, whether it be the dollar, gold, 10 year S&P, VIX, NASDAQ, Russell, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Shanghai Composite, WTI, ag and industrial metals. You know, nothing's really signaling overbought, or oversold. I'd say Shanghai Composite probably has the best um, set up right now in terms of the risk reward and the, and the probable range, but still uh, not not uh, fully oversold this morning here. Uh, and then lastly, one thing I would call out. So I, I have this um, I built this 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 global macro uh, uh, ETF list, um, just kind of collecting ETFs over the over the years, um, thinking about, you know, what what you know, which uh, which exposure, which ETFs best represent individual exposures. And so there's probably roughly around 300 uh, ETFs on this list. And so what I'll do for you every morning is refresh the list, resort the list, and call out anything that's signaling overbought, oversold, uh, you know, this morning. Um, so right now, if you look at it, nothing's really signaling oversold here. But as I scroll all the way down to getting to the overbought signals, you know, there is an actual oversold signal here. And our friends over at Simplify, their QQC, that's their exchange traded uh, fund on the NASDAQ uh, with upside convexity uh, to, 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 the, to, the, um, to the exposure. So I uh, definitely want to call that out. So this is a great opportunity for those who want to play for a tactical bounce uh, in U.S. equities uh, here in the month of October. This would be certainly uh, a, 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 an exposure you might want to think about, just given the risk reward set up uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the probable range. So with that, Terry Stell presenting our Macro Minute for Monday, October 3rd, 2022. Best of luck out there today. Cheers.